Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Evening Prayer here at Balhelvy Church. Uh, this is Christian Aid Week, and because of that, tonight's prayers are going to very much be thinking about the work of Christian Aid as they try to support uh, the world's uh, poorest people um, through different initiatives, uh, working with folk from all creeds, colours and, and religions across the world. The only real criteria for their help and assistance is need. Um, and we'll think some more about, about their work shortly. But before then, we're just going to begin, as we have been doing over the last few weeks, with this same little prayer that helps us to settle our hearts and minds as we come to meet with God this evening. So let's pray together. Lord, as we gather tonight, we want to find the grace to rest in you and to be still. We have worries and concerns, and that's only natural with things as they are. But we set them down just now. We can pick them up later. We have lists in our minds. Responsibilities we have to see to, and they're important things need to get done. But we set them down just now. We can take them up again later. We have fears we can't name, which lurk on the fringes of our consciousness, concerns about health, about safety and about the future, and these are all significant. But we turn from them just now. We can give our attention to them later. Lord, this isn't just time for you. It's time to be with you. We know we can't hear from you if our minds are racing. We can't receive from you if our hands are already full. So tonight in this time, we cultivate stillness. We practice attentiveness. We slow the rhythms of our bodies so that we can find our way back to ourselves and to you. Lord, you call us to be still. And as we sit here now, we are responding to that call as best we can. So speak to us now as your spirit takes your word and brings it alive in our hearts. So hear us, because we ask all of this in Christ's name. And in his name we pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of the things that strikes you most when you start reading the Gospels is how much Jesus had to say, not just about the next world, but about this world. What we value, who we care about, where our priorities lie. And he was in a long tradition of uh, prophets stretching all the way back to the Old Testament um, who said the same kind of thing and would often call their very own cultural and religious community back to what really matters, which wasn't their rituals, their practices, but the business of looking out for and caring for other human beings. And tonight's reading is one of those kind of passages. It's uh, written by the prophet Isaiah, who was around about six or 700 years before the time of Christ. And this reading is from Isaiah chapter 58, reading from verse 1. Shout it aloud. 
Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarrelling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke? To set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe him and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. One of the things that we have to thank uh, C.S. Lewis for, and there are many of them, uh, is the the reminder that we are not just spiritual creatures, but we're physical creatures. And what we do with our bodies uh, affects how we feel in our, our spirits. Uh, and that's why many spiritual traditions have uh, particular ways of sitting or postures or habits that we develop in prayer, which help us to pray. Um, one of them, which I find really helpful, is the business of opening my hands. So if I'm sitting and I would put my hands on my lap, but then you wouldn't see them. But I would I would just sit and I would sit with my hands uh, open in this way. Maybe that's the way you pray. Maybe you've never tried it. But tonight I want you to try it. I want to uh, ask you to, to sit with your hands on your lap, perhaps, but with your hands open uh, as a gesture of um, receptivity to what God is saying as we hold things, literally hold things before him tonight in prayer. And in this prayer, we're going to use a short response. Uh, when I say, God, in your mercy, I'd invite you to respond, hear our prayer. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray together. God, our refuge, we come to you with open hands. Some of us with hearts full of questions, some of us bruised by bereavement. Some of us fearful of what the future holds. All of us stunned by the events of this year. Draw close to us now in each of our homes as we place our honest questions and hopes into your open, resurrected and yet scarred hands. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With the honesty of the psalmist, the wrestling questions of Job, the lament and the hope of the prophets, we hold our own uncertainty before you this evening. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Hear the cry of our hearts, Lord, silent and aloud, for bereaved neighbours near and far. Comfort those pained by being absent and be near to those who are hurting alone. We hold them before you this evening. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this season of Easter, renew us with resurrection hope that while weeping lingers in the night, joy will come with the morning. Lord, we hold our hopes and our longings before you this evening. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this Christian Aid Week, we pray for and with communities across the world who are most vulnerable to coronavirus. We pray for people living in refugee camps and city slums with limited sanitation facilities who are unable to wash their hands regularly and have little opportunity to isolate from others. We pray for Christian Aid partners working to provide soap and buckets, communicating clear, accurate information, raising the voices of the most vulnerable and ensuring that they are kept as safe as possible. Lord, we hold the work of Christian Aid before you this evening. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those of us who are self-isolating, which can sometimes feel like we aren't doing anything. Remind us that we are all doing our part and saving lives by staying home. And we remember those who are no less busy in lockdown, trying to find new ways to do the work that they have been called to. Lord, we hold our own lives before you this evening. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for wisdom and resources for those in local and national authority and for all frontline and key workers here in Britain, Ireland and across the world. May their courage be met with respect and gratitude and may their first-hand experience have influence on those who hold power. We hold them before you this evening. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, Lord, because we ask them all in the name of Jesus Christ, our friend and our saviour. Amen. And now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. And may all the ground between us be holy ground until we meet again. Amen.